So a few days ago I made a video exploring some new discoveries regarding the FF06B5 mystery in update 2.0. We found the now open church down in the Badlands, the terminal containing an in-world equivalent of R slash FF06B5, and finally the new Arasaka Tower 3D arcade game littered with clues like more statues and references to Morgan Blackhand and Spider Murphy. However, a mere day, maybe less, after that video dropped, the very clever and dedicated people over on Reddit and Discord got to work in their masses, discovering way, way more than we ever could have expected. Now, bear in mind before watching this that some steps have been skipped relating to the entire mystery, and one important part in particular has only been completed with the help of the modding tool Redmod. So no, this mystery is definitely still far from solved. But there is a core reward at the end, which you can still get semi-legitimately without cheating, kind of. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive straight back into Arasaka Tower 3D to explore the new discoveries made regarding the FF06B5 mystery. Just a heads up, if you're coming into this blind, some of it may not make much sense at first. However, you can find my part 1 to this video for context down below. So, last time I pointed out that discovering the FF06B5 statue in this server room on floor 3 opened up a small room at the end of that floor behind the elevator, displaying the number 940204, which also corresponds to Spider Murphy's high score at the end of the game when you win. But it turns out behind this wall is an entire another their area, and the key to unlocking that lies in the other server room, displaying Morgan Blackhand's high score of 941229. So, having visited Murphy's server room first and possibly clearing the way to the end of floor 3 ahead of time, what you want to do is come to the Blackhand server room, containing his score, and simply wait, letting the timer tick down until there's just 272 seconds remaining. At this point, the floor 52 icon will transform into a lock symbol. When that happens, you want to come back to behind the elevator at the end of floor 3, wherein we have a whole nother chamber, an FF06B5 statue at the end, and each of the 10 digits to the sides. So, walking towards the number 2, you'll notice this kind of blue key icon come up on the lock. This is the first correct indicator of a 6 digit combination that we need to unlock the next step, and hitting the right 6 digits in order will cause the lock symbol to do this. Of course, this was figured out by a lot of trial and error from several people on the Reddit it to be 240891, and having then input this, you can return to the elevator as usual. However, rather than descending to floor 12 now, you will instead wind up on floor minus 10, which itself happens to be a sprawling labyrinth of blue walls, hidden doors, and pieces of a big QR code. Now again, I'm not taking credit for discovering any of this, this was all found as a joint effort by a lot of clever people over on the subreddit, which again, you can check out down below. So, the hardest part about this next step is just how little time we have remaining to complete the maze. Remember, we had to wait before for the timer to tick down before we could unlock this. And believe me, even after pretty much memorizing the correct route, it's still one hell of a time squeeze, made infinitely more difficult still without a map, given that half of the passageways you have to take are actually hidden behind doors that we took for walls, which, if you saw the last video, was one of the biggest takeaway quotes from that. Fortunately, with many contributions again from from the FF06B5 sub, it was only a number of hours before a definitive map of the maze was put together, highlighting not only the path to the exit, but also the locations of all eight discoverable pieces of the QR code. Now interestingly, when looked at from a top-down perspective, the path we have to take appears to spell out DM plus TV, potentially another unresolved clue to the mystery, or perhaps just an in-joke between the CDPR development team. Nobody knows quite yet. Now we're going to come back to the QR code in a second because there's a hell of a cool story there, but first look what happens when we do successfully reach the end of the maze. There is an elevator taking us back upstairs to the smasher fight and winning the game, but before that is this, a twofold reference to both The Witcher and Wolfenstein 3D, which many pointed out in the last video is what Arasaka Tower 3D is indeed an homage to, not Goldeneye, like I mistakenly said. See in Wolfenstein 3D, a hidden secret could similarly be found deep within a maze 
Games, which read Call Apogee, Say Aardwolf. Basically, it was part of a competition for Wolfenstein, with the first person to find the Easter egg and make the call to the company Apogee, saying the obscure word, winning a prize. Now, interestingly, there is a new Sandeviston called Apogee in version 2.0 of Cyberpunk, but nothing definitive linking that to the mystery has been established as of yet. The other half of this reference, though, lies in the fact it says Ard Wolf, reading not as a single word to describe a small African mammal, but instead as two, Ard Wolf, with an exclamation mark on the end, something which I would immediately assume to be a reference to the Witcher, commanding Geralt, who's commonly referred to as White Wolf, to use the force push sign known as Ard. Also, there's the fact that the Ard symbol is literally displayed behind the text, which is very definitively obviously tying it to the Witcher. Though again, nothing has been discovered as of yet, aside from that same mural we found last year in the complete edition. Exiting the maze, it doesn't matter whether you complete the Smasher fight after or not, just step into the elevator, and now, when quitting out of the game, the next part of this puzzle will be unlocked. And you could say that this bit still hasn't been solved. But before we delve into that, here's a couple more new discoveries that we have to explore first. So, exiting the arcade, you'll notice on all eight of these towers now are terminals asking for codes. Data, which is no doubt supposed to be found by following some more steps to this mystery, with one big clue potentially being this strange laptop. Found in a very obscure part of the junkyard wastes, this thing barely even shows up on scanners, and thus is very difficult to spot. Though, impressively, somebody discovered it mere hours after 2.0 dropped. Still, I guess amidst tens of thousands of players, it was bound to happen sooner rather than later. When opened, it can't be interacted with like most laptops, but instead flashes up with this familiar image, the Ouroboros from the mural found in the Witcher 3 reference. And more than that, we then get this show up, three streaks of symbols all written in elder text. Again, it wasn't long at all before this was translated back to the English alphabet, providing us with still just a table of random characters. Now, clearly this is of some importance, probably major importance but as of right now, it's merely been discovered, and I haven't seen any successful attempts to make sense of this, which correspond to the rest of the mystery, yet. Another thing, which had some really interesting stuff behind it, was the pieces of QR code littered about the maze. Now, clearly they meant something, and it wasn't long at all before, again, the very clever community managed to stitch it together into one big QR code, bearing in mind that one of the nine parts wasn't actually there in the maze. But, using an error-correcting algorithm, it was possible to recover that piece of the QR, and thus put together the entire thing. The best part about that whole process, though, is the name of the tool you used to complete that process, which was called the Reed Solomon Decoder, which if that is indeed the correct method and the right way that people were supposed to go about solving that part, then that is an absolute self-referential stroke of genius, and makes me completely question whether Solomon Reed was originally so named purely to line up with this very obscure discovery. So with the QR code now seemingly completed, what did it lead to? A web page? An image? Well, actually, it led to yet more code. Specifically, some Python code of an unwinnable game of tic-tac-toe, or noughts and crosses as I've always called it, displaying at the end the line, the only winning move for you is not to play. And indeed, if you've seen the movie War Games, you'll know that this is the exact logic used on the computer in that movie to prevent it from causing devastating thermonuclear war, explaining that not playing is the only way to win that. You see, the game tic-tac-toe cannot actually be one against a player who knows what they're doing, and can see every move ahead, i.e. a computer. It comes up a draw every single time, since that's the only possible result when nobody makes any errors. Again, overall a genius find by the community, which may very well be yet another key to unlocking this entire thing, though nobody appears to have quite bridged that gap as of yet. Now, moving back to the eight data points, and bear in mind from this point on, we are entering spoiler territory, for lack of a better way of describing it. This has not been properly solved in the way that it was supposed to, and the codes have not been discovered organically. That is now the main part which people are striving to discover out in the world, wherever and whatever form those clues may take. So if you don't want to jump ahead as it were, then stop watching the video now and wait until I release a part three, with this all being cleared up. But 
But, and let's preface this with some context. So, several members of the FF06B5 Discord came up with the admittedly cheaty but also pretty clever idea to solve these codes not by delving into the game's files and data mining them in the traditional sense, but merely by using the tool RedMod, essentially Red Engine's version of a creation kit for modders to use to make mods. Now, as I understand it, what they did with this is simply force each terminal to output the correct codes needed to solve them. This was done in a private stream between a few members of the Discord, but the results were then uploaded to YouTube, and despite being taken down a few hours later, it had already been seen by probably several thousand people. Including me, thanks to several of my viewers who private messaged me with links to the videos, no doubt after seeing my part one of this. So actually thank you to those people, because in part it makes me aware just which steps along this road have and haven't been solved definitively, and why therefore the steps after this have some really cool stuff, but don't make as much contextual sense as they probably should. And knowing that these answers have been data mined in a sense, I didn't want to spoil anything myself if it could be kept under wraps. However, as is the nature of the internet, once the cat's out the bag it is very difficult to contain, especially if the codes have been screenshotted and thus can be repeated, recorded and re-uploaded by anyone who's seen them. Now I believe, in an ironically similar way to the original email thread we find in the church, attempts were made from up top to shut this whole thing down and make everyone complete it properly, albeit to no avail, sadly. And thus a huge part of this mystery appears to have been skipped, the finding of the eight code parts, thus letting us jump to what is potentially the end and unlock a reward prematurely. Now I wouldn't be sharing this if the answers weren't already out there and hadn't been seen by hundreds of thousands of people already, but what I also want to stress here is that whilst we may have a shortcut to the prize, we certainly don't yet have all of the answers, meaning this mystery is far from over. Anywho, inputting the correct eight codes into the terminals will cause the Magenta program which I mentioned in the last video to seemingly run successfully, and by looking at the computer terminal again, we'll be provided with a set of coordinates and a quest marker out in the Badlands, where the next part of this thing takes place. So, coming out to the coordinates provided is a very difficult to spot mattress, positioned just off from the quest marker on the map. Now, there's several conflicting accounts as to how to get this next event to activate, but for me personally, and I made several attempts at this, I had to wait about one in-game hour from 4am on top of the mattress in an AFK position. This only worked when I literally didn't move at all and didn't even open up menus or anything. I just tabbed out and waited about 10 minutes for the event to activate. Eventually though, V will start coughing and have a relic seizure before passing out. We then get a cutscene of sorts containing what is no doubt several more clues connecting other elements of this mystery together. Again though, without context, it's not entirely clear as to how. After all that, we'll then be able to drive off in Polyhister's Thornton Demiurge truck. Again, I'm gonna try not to delve into the details found around here until more of this mystery has been unraveled. If you want to, it's easy enough to find elsewhere, but seriously, doing it this way kind of felt like watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy but skipping the two towers. But of course, it's entirely down to you. In fact, as cool as the truck is, I think personally I'm going to revert to a previous save to before I input the codes, in the hope that they can still be found out there in the world. In fact, it's actually possible to do the whole truck step without unlocking the terminals at all, and simply heading to the mattress and doing the AFK part, though presumably since that was only meant to be found via the terminal coordinates, it's probably still going to mess up the overall quest, so up to you whether you do it or not. Again, my main goal with this video is not to ruin FF06B5 for anyone interested, and indeed I believe the answers provided here aren't definitive by any means, but instead I wanted to shed an overall light as to what exactly is going on with this mystery right now. I've seen a lot of clips out there already simply showcasing this scene or tutorials on how to get there without out the context surrounding all of that. So to sum up that context, we still have the meaning behind the correct codes to find, as well as anything else which may exist beyond this thing, if there is anything else at this moment in time. After all, just like in the previous video, I feel like we've opened twice as many doors as we've closed with this, and have a lot to mull over. Personally, the Witcher connection is still of particular interest to me, and I'd love to figure out specifically how and why the Ouroboros ties into both of these games. So 
I think the main things which still need investigating further are the Badlands laptop with the Ouroboros, the Witcher 3 mural with the Ouroboros, and of course the underlying pattern which somehow connects to Tic-Tac-Toe, possibly serving as a cipher which allows us to solve the eight data terminals legitimately. Anyway, hopefully that keeps you all up to date on the mystery. If you have some ideas as to how this all fits together, then please comment them down below or head over to the subreddit in the description. I'm going to try and get back to the videos I was actually planning for Phantom Liberty now, but I will update you again if there's any more major developments on this. So for now, go nab yourself a free monster truck or, you know, wait it out and see if there's a better reward for solving it properly. As always, a huge thanks to the amazing supporters of this channel over on Patreon and thank you, of course, for watching. I'm Sam Bram and I'll see you very soon in another video, which hopefully isn't FF06P5 related. Have a great day, tunes.